I uh, just wanted to do a little quick video about how to use a circular slide rule uh, to do a little bit of glider math. Today I was going to talk about this little KL1. It's a really awesome little piece of hardware. The logarithmic scale for this guy is running around here on the inside. It goes from uh, 1 to 9 obviously. And the outer scale are the squares of those numbers. So you can do squares and square roots. On the back uh, really conveniently, there's a sine and tangent scale, so you can do trigonometry. So, the basic functionality of this guy is that it has two knobs. The top knob uh, rotates the entire face, and it has two markers, kind of a reference marker up here at the top, and a movable needle that you can move with the other knob. So if I were, if I wanted to multiply by two, I would set the reference knob up to one here, move the needle around to two, on the inner scale. Then I can move the face. And if I put the reference on 2, for example, now I can read off 4 from the needle. So 2 times 2 is 4. And similarly, 2 times 3 should be 6, right? Yep. Sanity check. Um, <clears throat> we can do this for anything, but you'll notice that once I get back around to 5, the needle is on 1 again. Now, that obviously doesn't mean that 2 times 5 is 1, but rather 2 times 5 is 10. Since the numbers only go from 1 to 9, that means we have to infer the magnitude of the answer. So that if we were to try to do 2 times 6, and we, read, we don't read off 1.2 from the needle, we read off 12, right? Okay, if we look on the back here, this inner scale has an S for sine. Um, we can rotate the needle around, you know, let's say to 30 degrees here, and read off 0.5 on the outer scale. So sine of 30 is 0.5. Uh, what's really handy is that if you set the reference to 1 on the opposite face, then since these scales run in opposite directions, you can read off the inverse of sine here. Um, we don't really care about the inverse of sine in gliders, but we do care about 1 over cosine theta, where theta is our bank angle, because that gives us the load factor. Um, to get cosine from sine, though, you have to find the complementary angle on this scale. So if I wanted to do um, cosine of 30, I would look at 60 on the sine scale, since 60 plus 30 is 90. They're complements with each other, and it looks like about 0.86 or something like that. Um, so I'm looking at cosine 30 here, and if I wanted to know the load factor for a 30 degree bank angle, um, I would need 1 over cosine 30. So for that, let's just flip this guy around, and we can read off 1.15 or so. Um, so we're pulling 1.15 G's at a 30 degree bank angle. Let's try this for a 45 degree bank angle. So we'll set the needle on 45 degrees. Um, that should be square root 2 over 2.707 right there, right? <clears throat> and if we look at its inverse, it's 1.414. Exactly, so we're pulling 1.4 G's at a bank angle of 45 degrees. Now we can go into a steep bank, 60 degrees. And that should be 2G's, exactly right. So now let's do some, some basic glide angle calculations. Let's say I have 12 miles to go. I'm going 12 miles somewhere. I want to know basically how much altitude I'm going to lose in 12 miles. Uh, for my particular glider, I'm going to be traveling at 55 miles per hour. Except I don't want to set my needle on 1 for 55 miles per hour because I want to read out seconds on the scale. So 1 hour is 3600 seconds, so I'm going to set the needle on 3600. Now if I want to figure out how much time it's going to take me in seconds to go 12 miles, I just rotate the face so that the reference is on 12 going 12 miles so at 55 miles per hour that looks about like 7800 or 780 seconds okay 
So I know at 55 miles per hour, uh, my vertical descent rate is about 2.3 feet per second. So I need to multiply 780 seconds by 2.3. So all I'm going to do is rotate my reference around to 1 and then the needle over to 2 point, sorry, over to 2.3. 1, 2, 3 and multiply by 780. So that looks about like 1,800 feet or so, a little under 1,800 feet. So let's check this with a normal calculator. 12 miles at 55 miles per hour and then multiply by 3600 to get seconds, so 785 seconds, times 2.3 feet per second, 1,806 feet. So, not bad. You can also do this um, another way, and that's by glide ratio. So, at 55 miles per hour, this glider has a glide ratio of about uh, 33 and a half something like that. So let's do this again in a totally different way. So what I'm going to do is set this up to convert from statute miles to feet. So I'm going to set the reference to one, one mile, and then I'm going to set the needle to 5,280 feet, something like that. Then I multiply by 12 miles, so I set the reference knob out to 12. And then I can read off 63,000 feet. So that's 63,000 feet in 12 statute miles. Now I want to divide 63,000 by this 33 and a half. So I'm going to set this up to divide by 33 and a half. I set the reference to 33, 1, 2, 3 and a half. And I set the needle down on to 1. I'm going to rotate the reference needle over to 63,000 feet. One, two, three. And you can read off the answer here. 1,900 feet. Whatever difference we got from here in the previous answer is probably just me reading this graph a little bit poorly. Another thing we can do is to calculate increases in stall speed from increases in load. So let's say you have a polar for your glider and it says it stalls at uh, 40 miles an hour and your polar was drawn for a glider weight of 900 pounds. But now you've added a whole bunch of equipment and yourself and the glider weighs 1200 pounds. So we have our ratio here 900 to, or 1200 to 900. We rotate the reference around here that's a ratio of approximately 1.34. To get the increase, the, the factor to increase the stall speed by, we need the square root of this. So square root of 1.34, I'm just going to move the needle till it reads 1.34 on the outer scale, on the square scale. So 1.34 is about there, and it looks like that's an increase of a factor of about 1.15 or something like that. So if we multiply 40 by 1.15 we can see our new stall speed is about 46 miles per hour at 1200 pounds so let's check that with the calculator I'll just put in our new load of 1200 pounds and it was originally 900 so I'll divide by 900 take the square root to get the factor by which to increase the stall speed and then multiply by the old stall speed which was 40 miles an hour and we got 46. Okay, so not bad. So there you have it, a uh, way to use a mechanical circular slide rule to calculate glider stiff. Hope you enjoyed.